I mean, seriously, is that all there is to Mary? Let me introduce you to my friend, the Virgin, Mary. Not the artist Mary or the compassionate Mary, just the Virgin, Mary. What kind of an introduction is that? In our time and place, it would be plain old insulting to introduce someone as a virgin. But these words were not written in our time, or even to our time. These words were written nearly 2,000 years ago to a society that held different priorities and different views about what is offensive. This text was written within the context of its time, addressing the current events of its day. And it was filled with urgency and fact-bending because there was a great deal at stake. But the messages contained within the text reflect universal and timeless truths, truths that speak to every generation <coughs> and every audience. And it is that particular wisdom that still entices us today. The author of Luke's Gospel has a very important and life-changing story to tell. The events described mark the beginning of something new, something wonderful, something very, very big, and it mattered very much how the story was told if others were to be convinced. The goal was not historical accuracy, nor was it to produce an accurate biography. The goal was to bring the good news of salvation and hope to all of humanity, not just the Jews, but everyone. And this is important because the author was not Jewish. He was a Gentile writing to the Gentiles. And he really had his work cut out for him. On the one hand, if the gospel was to appeal to the Gentiles, it needed credibility. It needed to draw on the best thinking of its day. But on the other hand, if it was to appeal to Jews, it needed to draw heavily on existing scripture so that it could be seen as a new <coughs> chapter in an ancient story. Luke's whole premise was that it is Jesus who is the true Lord and King, not Caesar. And that was a pretty heavy assertion for that time and place. Because Caesar was not just a king, he was considered a god. And in those days, everyone knew that gods were born of virgins. So if Jesus was to outrank Caesar, then he too must be a god born of a virgin. Now, I hope that that doesn't bring on a crisis of faith for anyone. But it is incredibly important that we understand these things if our real faith is to grow. If you've been around the church for any length of time, you know that asking questions has not always been encouraged. I remember being told that a core element of faith was the belief that things happen word for word the way the Bible says. But as I grew older, the biblical stories began to challenge my developing reason. So I thought my faith wasn't good enough. But that's not what real faith is about, and it took me a very long and painful journey to learn that. Like I said before, scripture is written in the context of its time, but the messages reflect universal and timeless truths that speak across the ages. And it is these essential truths, not the details of the story, that point us to God. So that brings us back to Mary, who Luke claimed was a virgin. Does it matter to us if Mary was a virgin? No, because our real interest is in deepening our relationship with God. But what does matter are the words Gabriel speaks to Mary. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Well, now I'm listening. Now you have my attention. Now I can identify with Mary because those are words that I, too, long to hear. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. How many times are we summoned in this way? Maybe the wording is different, and maybe the speaker is not quite so angelic, but how many times have we been encountered by God in a way
way that was special. Mary recognized and was receptive to God. She said yes when she was told that she would soon bear a child who would be the Son of God. She said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. These are the details Luke gives us. But what was Mary really saying yes to? Because I think there's a whole lot more at stake here than an unwed virgin giving birth to the Son of God. I think there is a far greater truth being revealed that surpasses the details. Jesus entered into our world in the form of a tiny, helpless baby. He grew into a man whom we believe to be the embodiment <coughs> of God. Emmanuel, God with us. <coughs> he lived in perfect communion with God. He reflected God inside and out. And he went around telling everyone who would listen that they had the capacity to do the same thing if only they would say yes to God. But here's what really strikes me. Who said yes to God first? Wasn't it Mary? Wasn't it Mary who first embodied God by saying, yes, let it be with me according to your word? And isn't it just possible that it was Mary who taught Jesus to say yes to God? Well, that shines a whole new light on things. I'm not worried about Caesar and who outranks who. What concerns me here is how powerful and life-altering Mary's yes actually was and how radically everything changes when we say yes to God. What we learn from Mary is that when we say yes, we are agreeing to the personification of divine love in our own lives, in our own stories. But that means risk extreme risk, like the risk taken by a virgin who gives birth out of wedlock. From Abraham to Jacob, from David to Daniel, one story at a time, the Bible has revealed to us the imperfect dreamers who dared to say yes to God and the risks that they were willing to take. From the Magi to the manger, from the empty tomb to Pentecost, God's goodness and grace has been written on one human heart after another. We all carry a spark of the divine within us. And when we say yes, it ignites into a flame. God's divinity grows within us until, like Mary, we can't help but exclaim, My soul magnifies the Lord. Those were Mary's first words to Elizabeth when she arrived on her doorstep. My soul magnifies the Lord. God's divinity has been ignited within me. I said yes, and everything has changed. There is a lot of fact-bending in the Bible. There are historical inconsistencies, and even some clearly recognized tall tales. Yet I am 100% convinced that the Bible is pure truth an everlasting truth that points us in the direction of human wholeness. And that is one thing that we really do have to take on faith, because the Bible is a core element of our faith. It contains wisdom that has been passed from generation to generation, and it gives us what little information we have about the man named Jesus. It reveals to us the nature of of a God who deeply desires relationship with humans. And it instructs us on how to live together in shalom. It reveals to us a way of life that allows every living thing to flourish. And through the good news of Jesus Christ, it reveals a God who is with us, in us, and through us. The Bible is truth, not history. History can easily be distorted. It happens all the time. But truth is truth. And if we allow ourselves to get caught up in the technical details, then we miss the truth that is staring us right in the face. The truths revealed to us in Scripture are truths that must be lived, experienced, and practiced. Saying yes to God means a willingness to change, to relinquish ideas about ourselves and who we think we are. In this Advent season, we wait for the promises of God to unfold in our lives. But here's a question for you to reflect on as we head into Christmas.
Christmas Eve. Have you said yes to God? Deeply, sincerely, and honestly, have you said yes? Can you recall hearing the words, greetings, favored one, and did you say yes? If not, let me just say this to you now. Greetings, favored ones. The Lord is with you. God is calling you to say yes. God is inviting you to surrender to divine union. This union is all that really matters because once we say yes, we can see reality from a much fuller reality, one that has eyes that are larger than our own. But we all have to labor, like Mary, receptive to the seed of God within us, seeking to give birth to love in our own time and place. Luke's gospel reveals the essential humanness of God's incarnation. He shows us love born with a human face and tiny hands and tiny little feet. Mary said yes, and her yes led to the flesh and boning of our faith story. The author of Luke said yes to God, and he went on to tell us an amazing story that we could not help but hear. In fact, the entire biblical landscape is filled with everyday people who all said yes to God. And that is what it's about, saying yes to God and surrendering ourselves to something that is far greater than anything we can ever imagine. May it be with you all according to God's word. Amen.